Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. To honor copyright laws, we have removed some audio and video elements from this message. Now here's this week's message. With the turn of each page, words spill out. Teaching, instructing, challenging. The words arrange, gather, and speak. They become etched into our reality. Faith turns into action until it becomes not only a part of our lives, but a new way to live altogether. Good morning. How are you today? Welcome online if you're joining with us. We're glad that you're a uh, part as we uh, start this new series, Encouraging Words. When we're in a difficult place, maybe we need some encouragement. Where do we get that from? Certainly, God's Word gives us encouragement. Now, just before we get into that, I wanted to tell you and invite you to something that's coming up in just uh, a few weeks. April 29th, this is a week after the ladies retreat, we're doing a men's event, okay? Every year, whenever the ladies do their retreat, we have guys going, hey man, what about us? What are we, chop liver? You know, I mean, and so we, we have done them in the past, but we thought, you know what, let's do something, we'll put it right behind the ladies retreat. So it's just one evening, Sunday night, April 29th, here in the auditorium, 6 p.m., and if you're a guy, we want you here, it's going to be a lot of fun, we're going to have some games, we're going to do um, uh, a, a little bit of worship. Uh, some vision. We'll be eating lots of protein. It'll be a lot of fun. So um, if you're 18 and up, you can come and be part of that. If you want somebody to come who's less than 18, make sure they're just sponsored by you or somebody, you know, who's an adult. And that's great. They're welcome to come. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we hope that you can come and be part of that. Again, April 29th, Sunday night, 6 p.m. This building, this room right here. Okay. Well, you know, I have a question for you. Have you ever uh, done something and then given up too early. Sometimes you don't realize it's too early until you, you realize, dang, man, if I would have just pushed forward a little more, you know, it could have, everything could have changed. The results would have been different. I was thinking this week about one of those times that happened to me. I was, I was younger. I, I used to be an avid backpacker when I was, when I was a young man. And this one time I was going up into the mountains. I lived in, in southern Arizona at the time. And the mountains, are they, they just jut up into the sky. It goes, it, it, it goes up about 11,000 feet. And you, you know, in like a 15-mile hike, you know, switchbacks. Starts out in the desert where there's cacti, where there's rattlesnakes, there's scorpions. And by the time you're done, at the end of 15 miles, it's pine trees and deer. And it's just a whole different experience. And, and uh, so we're, we start at the very bottom. It's in the middle of the summer, me and my bud. Uh, we're, uh, it's like 110, super hot. We're hitting these switchbacks. We've got a pretty heavy backpack on and just drudgery, just drudgery. We're just exhausted hour after hour. We're taking breaks. There's gnats in our face. There's just, it's just so hard. And, and, and we, we had a map, but we didn't have the, uh, uh, the, uh, pedometers and the things they have today. So we weren't, we thought, we thought, man, where is this? We thought there was some, some kind of rest area and it just, it just seemed to never come. We finally got so discouraged, so tired, we just decided we're going to camp right here, right there where the trail is. I mean, there's no place to camp on a trail. And so we just kind of cleared out a, a place where there was some cacti, and, and uh, it, was, it was a horrible place to be. You know, there's like rocks. It wasn't level. We had to pull some cacti out. That's real tough. And then the ones that weren't pulled out, they were still all around us. And they were like about this high, and they had like hypodermic needles, and they kept skewering us into the, in our calves and our, and our ankles. And, and just, it was so miserable. You know, we created a little fire there to get some water. We had to bushwhack all the way, you know, like a quarter of a mile down this, this ravine to just get some, some, some water. So anyways, in the morning, we could not wait to get out of this place. It was like horrible. We, we, we get all our stuff, we hitch up our, our, our backpacks. We go about 10 minutes, 10 minutes around this bend. It opens up, you know, trees, bushes, a little, th that, that ravine, actually, that's where the, the stream was, you know, and it was like right there. 
and a nice little place to, ca to camp, level, and pine, little pine needles. You know, oh, 10 more minutes, it would have been a whole different experience. You, you know, sometimes life is like that, where we, we, we just get so discouraged, we just think, I can't do it anymore. And we don't realize that sometimes we're at the place where just a little more can make a big difference. Now, Jesus talks about when we get discouraged to continue on, to not give up, to persevere. Because that's a message we need. Certainly, it was a life lesson I took from that experience I told you about. But it's something that we need all the time to remind ourselves, hey, there's, especially when you're discouraged, you need something to kind of keep your hope up, right? You need something to kind of keep you going. And so we, we got to keep going. Jesus tells a number of stories. I want to look at one. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can follow along in Luke, the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to look at chapter 18. There, there's a portion. He tells a parable about not giving up. It's kind of a comical, actually, a comical story, actually. It's, it's because he's, he's got this powerful judge and this powerless widow, and they kind of are at odds. <laughs> and then the widow, like, wins in the story. It's kind of, it's, 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 it's somewhat funny, but makes the point. And, and so it says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So he kind of sets the, the stage. This is what this parable is about. Hey, listen, you need to stay focused. You need to not give up, and you need to stay, stay focused on God and continue to pray. And so uh, we, learn, we, we meet this judge. Now, he's a real rascal, and I think Jesus sometimes gets these, these really bad guys for shock value, you know, so it really gets their attention. Verse 2, he says, he said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. In other words, he didn't give a hoot about what other people thought. He was unsympathetic. He was callous. He was hard-boiled. He just could give a rip about anybody, much less this lady who's coming to him, this widow. Verse 3, there was a widow in the town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. And so we don't know what her problem is, but she, she is continuous. She keeps coming at him, pleading, hey, listen, I need help. I need your, I need justice. I need you to help me. And, and she, now she's a, a, a woman, and in that day and age, a woman had no rights. She's a widow, so she's like on the bottom of the social ladder. She has no resources. In fact, widow means forsaken or left empty. However, she's no pushover. She keeps coming to this judge, and it becomes, boils down to a battle of the wills. Here it says in verses 4 and 5, for some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. Here he is. He's, he's got all the cards. He's, got, he's, he's the judge. And he's going, hey, man, I, I, this lady, she's out of control, man. She might end up you know, that word attack means like give to give a black eye or the bruise. She, she might actually just haul off and slug me or something. I don't know what she's going to do. I can't take it anymore. She's wearing me down. And so he just says anything to get this lady out of my life, you know, to get some kind of justice, to get some, you know, she wants justice. He goes, just to get some kind of peace. Now, is this how God is? is it, it, certainly Jesus is setting this up. And he tells this story in such a way where he, he says, hey, some people basically, he's saying, think God is like this, that you have to keep badgering him and begging him and pleading and pawing at him and scratching at him until finally he goes, oh, my goodness, this person, uh, just to get them out of my hair, I will just, okay, whatever, I'll give you what you want. And that's the way some people see it. So Jesus tells the story. But his message here is, is really, he, he makes a comparison, but it's a comparison by contrast. He is saying God is not like that. That even though some people see God like that, he goes, this is not how God is. God is not somebody you have to continue to plead with and harangue and harass and beg and grovel. He goes, no, 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 God's not like that. And yet when we pray, we find God doesn't always answer, certainly right away right? Sometimes there's this long delay. Sometimes it's way, way long. So why? If, if God wants to grant what 
our request. If, if, we're, if he's not like that evil judge, that callous judge, and he wants to grant our request, why is there no answer or certainly a delay or a long delay? Well, the Bible talks about this, and, and this is part of we need to know what's happening. Why is there a delay when we understand that it helps us to persevere? It helps us to keep going. It helps us to not give up when you know there's something behind the scenes. Verse 7, he says, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says, And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? There's a rhetorical question. The answer is, no, he will not. God is eager to answer your prayers. He's eager to answer them. So if he's eager and it doesn't happen, why persist? What's going on? Four reasons. Number one, persistent praying helps me to focus on God. It helps me to focus on God. It reminds me, not God, God knows he's the source, but it reminds me that God is the source. Sometimes we get, we get fuzzy about that. You know, when we're, in a, when we're in trouble, when we're in a crisis, God's, for, for many people, God is not the first place they go. They go everywhere else, anywhere they can to try to resolve their crisis, their problem. And when we pray and there's a delay, it causes us to remind ourselves, no, God is the one. When, no one, when nobody else, no other thing can help us and rescue us, it keeps drawing us back to God. You know, God is the one who's going to rescue me. The Bible says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And so he says, he's the one who meets our needs. We don't have to keep coming to him and it's not some kind of blackmail thing going on. No, God... God is the source. Now, we have a short attention span. We go to God, we pray, and then we get, we get distracted, right? Well, see, God wants us to continue to come back to him to remind, hey, he's the source. He's the source. And things that are really important, we, sometimes it's, it's, it takes more than what we have, honestly. You know, just some of us, we just haven't grown our spiritual life or mental capacity to pray, because it takes a lot of, of work to pray. That's what Hebrews 4 says, is that it's, we actually enter into labor when we pray. It's, it's hard work. You know, in Korea, where they uh, have the largest church in the world, a lot of the churches there are, are I mean, the mega churches here are like average size for South Korea. And in Korea, there's some large churches, and, and a number of them have places where they pray. One church in particular in Seoul, Korea has, a, has what they call prayer mountain. And people go and pray on this mountain. You know what the mountain is? Just a carved out hole. They don't want it comfortable. Th th they encourage you to pray in a place where you're not all that comfortable. You know what happens if you're real comfortable and you start to pray? Right. <laughs> you fall asleep. You get some good shut eye. That's what prayer plus comfortable means. Catching up on some well-earned rest, right? <laughs> and so sometimes it's good to not let yourself get that comfortable. It's okay to be outside and be a little cold. It's okay to maybe be on your knees. It's okay to walk around. You want to, sometimes you don't, if you really want to pray about something and you're letting God do something in your life and you're, and, and you're letting the power of prayer to, at work, it's, It'd, it'd be kind of like going to the gym and getting too comfortable. I mean, you're there to work. It's something, it's, it's not all about comfy, being comfy. It's about working and doing something in the heavenlies. And so sometimes that's, that's real hard, and we haven't trained ourselves up. And there's other people that are good at that. People can come alongside you and pray who are strong. You know, I mean, if you were, if you were going to do some kind of great event, you know, wouldn't it be great to have like a pro, like an Olympian come? I'll help you out. I mean, they're going to really carry you way farther than you could on your own or even with somebody else if they're like really good. And, you know, there's people that have built themselves up in prayer and you need some, some of you, you're in, in a tight spot. You need people to pray with you. You know, Andy, well, how do I in the world do I find somebody like that? Well, we, we have them in our church. We, we have an online prayer group that we're running this semester. If you're, if you're watching online, you can be part of that. There, that's in your comment that just appeared right now in your comment area. If you're in our church here, we have a prayer group that meets in our church. We have 
a prayer group that meets Saturday morning. We have our prayer ministry that meets here. There's, we have a lot of people that are very good at that. And, if you, and, and some of you need somebody who can pray along with you. Now, how do you even know the right person to get? Well, you, you should ask them, are you praying for somebody right now? And if they say, yeah, I'm praying for like 10 or 20 people, that's probably not the person for you because nobody can really pray effectively with that. Not nobody, very few people can pray effectively that many people. You want somebody where they're praying daily for you. And so they have two, three, four people like that. Now, if they say they have nobody, they're probably not the person either. <laughs> they're probably not, that's just not where they're at in their life. So finding somebody who can pray with you, this is important because prayer changes things. You know, I told you earlier about our men's event that we're having on April 29th. Uh, and we wanted to, you know, or we started planning this a few months back. We thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to have, we have a guy in our church who makes some great deer chili. Uh, but he has, this was before deer season. And, and so we said, hey, listen, can you, can you go sh shoot a deer for us? And, and so we can have <laughs> deer chili for the guys. And he goes, yeah, but I mean, I can't guarantee that, you know, that a deer will, you know, <laughs> jump in front of me. We said, no problem, we'll start praying. So I started praying for him too, every day. Lord, help him to kill a deer. <laughs> That's kind of an, uh, not my average prayer, but I kept checking in every week. How's the deer hunting going? He finally got, he finally got one. So we're having a deer that's been prayed in. <laughs> It'll taste good. <laughs> prayer makes a difference when we, when, we, when we pray. Psalm 105 says, depend on the Lord and his strength. Always go to him. For help. Number two, persistent praying clarifies my requests. A delayed answer gives me time to clarify what I really want. A man goes and he prays to God. He goes, God, he goes, um, can I ask you a question? He goes, sure. He goes, what is a million dollars to you? He goes, well, a million dollars is just a penny. He goes, oh, okay, what is a million years to you? He goes, a million years is just a second. He goes, well, God, could I have a penny? He goes, in just a second. <laughs> it's kind of a weird joke, right? <laughs> but you know, and sometimes there's a delay. Sometimes there's this long delay that happens. And, um, and in that process, God is doing something that clarifies something in us. Why, is, is that what we really want? So, you know, sometimes I've prayed for things. And then over time, I start realizing, why was I praying for that in the first place? I don't really want that. In fact, sometimes I'm glad God did not honor it and did not answer it. He's kind of waiting for me, you know, to kind of figure out, oh, that's not going to really make me happy. I thought it was at the time, but it turns out it really wouldn't have made me happy. Zechariah 13.9 says, I will test them as gold is tested. Now, gold, of course, is refined as it's heated up. The dross gets, goes to the top. They take the dross off. It makes it more refined, more pure. He says, I'll test them as gold is tested, and then they will pray, and I will answer them. And so time separates things that we really need and just whims and wishes. Kind of, it's like that dross, those whims and those wishes, it gets, gives us a chance to get rid of those. And so a delay is not a denial, it's usually a test. He's testing us like gold gets tested. And sometimes things get heated up, and when they get heated up, we, we kind of, like, Christians are like tea bags. You put them in hot water, what's in them comes out. We start realizing, oh, that's in me? And I was praying for that? That's kind of a selfish prayer. That's something that really wouldn't help me. Oh, I was just misinformed. I, th I, was, I was duped by the world. I thought that would bring me pleasure and fulfillment. Turns out it will not. So God is in the process of letting that delay work in us something. Refine our vision. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Nothing worthwhile is really accomplished with half-heartedness. God wants us to have all of our heart, all in, praying, and he starts to work in that. So he clarifies my request. Number three, persistent praying prepares me for the answer. God usually wants me to do, to do more in my life than, than I even want. And it like surprises me. You know, I'm praying for something and all of a sudden, I, you know, something greater happens. You, you, we're not even aware of it. When, when our first son was, uh, was diagnosed with, he, they said, well, he's going to be 
uh, he's going to die at birth. So they recommended you, we, we abort our son. And we didn't. And we were praying, and Sharon was on bed rest for months. Uh, as we were, as, and each time we'd go to the doctor, he'd say, it's getting worse. You know, it's getting worse. And so here's the delay, and God could have healed, and, and yet through that process, many people heard about our story, heard about how we're trusting God. And then when God healed, and at the very last moment, it was a testimony to that whole office staff, to met se several people got, uh, you know, uh, uh, encouraged that we're in a difficult spot. People re reignited their faith. A lot of things happened through that. Now, it would have been my preference. It just, you know, instantly happened. But God sometimes is allowing the delay because he wants even a greater blessing than we can realize. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare or ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. So sometimes God denies things because he wants to bless us even greater. And so he's at work doing other things we're not aware of. We're only thinking about our crisis, our need. But he's doing, he's doing something grander, bigger, even than we can imagine or pray for. And so sometimes the delay is there for that purpose. You know, people say, well, prayer changes things. And it does. But prayer also changes us. God is at work changing us. He's interested in our circumstances, but he's way more interested in our character and who we are and growing us up and strengthening us. Something happens when we pray. Recently, I was reading about the biologist and Nobel Prize winner, Elizabeth Blackburn. She got her Nobel Prize for uh, discovering why uh, aging happened and particularly uh, premature aging wrinkled skin, gray hair, uh, an immune system that starts to break down. And it happens because the chromosomes uh, at the ends start to break off. And in her study, she discovered that it's, that happens, this breakage happens when we encounter difficult things in life and we get stressed out. And we, it's kind of this fight or flight thing. We, we get all filled with, uh, you know, our whole body starts surging with, with, with the destructive hormones and it, it's, it, it becomes destructive on our bodies. She says through prayer, through meditation, but I'm adding prayer. She goes through meditation that we start to approach problems in life differently. And we start to see things differently. And certainly in prayer, we, we realize we're not in it alone. God's there to help us out. Uh, you know, and all of a sudden that Goliath gets shrunk down where, hey, that's, that's, I, that's a winnable war. With God on my side, I can do this. And it helps physically, helps your body out. So God is doing something in us while we're waiting. And then number four, persistent praying strengthens my faith. It strengthens my pray faith. Prayer and faith go hand in hand. It's like this one church, there's a lightning bolt strike right in the middle of the service. Everybody freaks out. They run away as the smoke clears. There's only one lady left. And Satan standing right there where the lightning bolt was. And, he, and she looks like she's undaunted. And he goes, aren't you scared of me? And she goes, I'm not scared of you. I've been married to your brother for 35 years. <laughs> well, sometimes we have difficult things. And when difficult things come to our lives, our, 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 our faith gets strengthened. We can, get, we can get stronger through it if we approach it prayerfully. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And so you remember the harvest is coming. You go, well, the delay is long. Well, then the harvest is going to be big. You're going to have a bumper crop. God's doing something huge. I read about this story of Reese Howells, missionary of Africa. He was uh, uh, converted in the Welsh revival back in the beginning of the uh, early 1900s. And his dad was a minor, he was a minor, but God did something terrific in his life. And uh, he comes to Christ and he starts praying and God says, uh, you know, he senses God wants him to be a missionary to Africa. So, but he doesn't have the resources. So him and his wife, they're going, you know, this is what God wants. They only had enough, they kind of calculated it up, but they sold everything. They would have only have enough money to get like 50 miles on a train out of town. So God says, well, to him in prayer, he goes, who is your source? He goes, you are. He goes, well, then 
you know, act like it. So he goes, okay. So he just announces to the church, we're going to be missionaries to South Africa, we're to, to Africa. We're going to go there. And, uh, uh, and so they throw a party for him. They, sh- they send him off. They pray for him. He gets on the train. He gets 50 miles out of town. They get off the train. He's standing, he, him and his wife, at a train station in the middle of nowhere, you know, like he's going, I look so, like a fool. Here we are. And God speaks to him and says, what would you do if you had the money you needed? He goes, I would go get in line, get a ticket, and then go and then get on a boat and go to Africa. So he goes, well, then do that. So he gets in line. There's like 18 people there in front of him. The line's getting shorter. He's thinking, this, I'm going to look so dumb when I get to the ticket counter if God doesn't come through. And then there's only two people finally between him and the ticket counter. And right then, the people right in front of him, they turn around to him and his wife and they go, you know what? We decided we're not going to go. You can have our tickets. And so he ends up, you know, going there, going to Africa, converting many, many people, ministering to many people, coming back, planning to Bible college. And his life was about just prayer and seeking God, letting God grow his faith. You know, when, those fir- when that first happens, you're like awestruck. But as you start to trust in God, you start realizing, no, God's faithful. God comes through. And this is certainly true for us. Jesus concluded this. He said, I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will, f- will he find faith on earth? I think it's interesting, you know, here Jesus starts talking about, he starts out talking about prayer, but then he says, what, you know, he ends with faith. And the reason is because they go together. Our faith and our prayer, they go hand in hand. You, what you are praying for, if you have a prayer list, which you should, I do, in my notes in my, in my phone, I have a, one of them called prayer list, and I have something I pray through, and, and I have uh, what I'm praying for, and then when, when I started praying for it. But your prayer list, you look over that, your prayer list indicates the size of your God. If your God is real small, your prayers will be teeny. But if you have a, gr- a great God, a God who created the universe, created you as a master of time, can provide everything. I mean, our prayers reflect what we really believe about God. So many people, they just say, well, you know, I believe in God. Yeah, but their God they believe in is a little teeny God. God wants you to certainly believe in him, but he wants more than that. He wants you to believe who he really is and what he can do for you. God can do amazing things. And so when we pray, it causes us to realize, hey, God's my source. He'll come through for me. I can trust in him. And it helps us to re- ref- really refine what we're praying for. God's not just like a, uh, like a Aladdin's lamp and you just rub the lamp and, a, you know, poof, we get it. I mean, that would be destructive for us because we'd get things we don't want. You know, sometimes a blessing, sometimes God's answer to your life, a blessing is a problem. You ever thought of that? It's a problem for you to, it, it becomes a problem. And so you might, have you ever thought of that? When you're praying, Lord, bless me, you might be just, Lord, God, give me a bunch of problems. And so we want to be real specific because often blessings are problems. Certainly they come with problems, right? My three boys, they're they're certainly God's blessings to me, but they had their share of problems too. You know, I mean, it was, it's, we want to be specific. And God uses that. He prepares us for a greater blessing than we can ever imagine, and he strengthens our faith. Now, Jesus tells uh, a parable earlier in this gospel about persisting in prayer. Different story, same point. Don't give up. Stick it out. Hang in there. Keep praying. But here's what he says after that parable. There, beginning in verse 9. He says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though your evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He says, you can count on God. God's going to come through. But we need to persevere. We need to persevere. When I was a kid, I used to play this, this stupid game that would irritate our neighbors uh, called Ding Dong Ditch. I don't know if you're familiar with that. 
A lot of people have played that. How many of you have ever played Ding Dong Ditch? Oh, quite a few of you. You kind of, yeah, well, you were a, a terror to your neighborhood too then. <laughs> we usually did it in groups. And it, you wait till it's night. In case you're wondering how to play, you wait till it's night. And then you kind of select a neighbor who, you know, maybe has some bushes that you can, you know, sneak up on. Then you ring their doorbell a few times. And, you know, the later the better because you want it to, you know, you want it to really bother them. You want them to get out of bed and put on their robe and, 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 and they come to the door and you're gone, man. You have, you have, you have hit the road, right? You ding, dong, ding, dong, and then boom, you ditch. You're out of there. And one time this happened and uh, uh, we, we kept going back to the same door, which is stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> and the, the guy, the dad, like left out the back door, snuck around and hid in the bushes. And so when we came up to ring the doorbell, he jumped out and screamed, freaked us out. We never went back to his house. He solved it. He solved his problem. <laughs> but, you know, I think sometimes we do that with God, where we, where we ring the doorbell and then we, yeah, let's go. You know, we, we leave. We ditch. We're gone. We're off doing other things. And that Jesus says, no, no, when you knock, keep on knocking ask keep on asking seek keep on seeking there's something happens in the perseverance this is what it means to not give up realizing god's doing something in me daniel boone uh, he was an explorer in kentucky and he tells a story about a guy who asked him he said hey daniel have you ever gotten lost because he you know he's always traveling around he goes no i've never gotten lost he goes, however, sometimes I've been bewildered for days. <laughs> sometimes even up to a week, but never lost. Have you ever been bewildered? You just kind of, what's going on here? I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm hanging in, but I'm, I'm bewildered. And when you're in a place where you want to give up, you know, you're, you're in a marriage that's difficult. You go, ah, what's going on? What gives? It's interesting. Today is my anniversary, 29th anniversary, married to Sharon. And, yeah, I mean, you don't get to 20 years or 29 or 30 without be having some bewildered moments where you're going, oh, what's going on here? You know, how's this thing going down? Or maybe you have an illness or your job is so unfulfilling or you have an unmet dream and you're thinking of giving up on your dream or you're thinking of giving up on yourself be well when you're in a bewildered place it can be pretty discouraging god's message to you is don't give up don't give up look up let's pray okay would you bow your heads with me well lord Thank you, Lord, for your word. When we read your word, even though this message was written down for us 2,000 years ago, it carries with it today life. You say that the, as we read your word, that it actually divides between soul and spirit. It helps clarify exactly between intentions and motives of our heart. Lord, I pray for those who are discouraged right now by the circumstances that they see themselves in. And they're in a bewildered place. Some of you are just in a wilderness. You're just bewildered. You're glancing over at the towel saying, I think I'm going to throw in the towel. And you know, God's word for you is you do not give up. Don't give up. You say, God, help me to realize that you are my source. Would you do that? Just pray. Help me to realize you are my source. And that in a delay, I need to continue to go to you. Would you say, God, help test me in, my, in this time of unanswered prayer. where this It's not a denial. It's certainly a delay, but it's a testing. And if you're praying and you're, and you're in a delay, there's two things happening. God is testing you and Satan is contesting you. A 
against your faith. Would you say, God, strengthen my faith. Help me to see that you're that my prayers really are an indication of what kind of God you are in my life. You say, God, grow, grow my understanding of who you are. And I want to be, would you say, God, prepare my heart, prepare who I am for even a greater blessing. The longer the wait, the greater the harvest. Some of you have never opened your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you're online or maybe you're here right in the auditorium. You've never made a faith statement to Jesus. And today I'm going to ask you to do that. Would you say, Jesus Christ, thank you for coming and, 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 and laying down your life for me, saving me. Would you say, God, today I want to have your Holy Spirit in me. Would you say, God, forgive me for doing things my way trying things without you, with your help, I'm going to start depending on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.